Welcome everyone to this Good Friday worship from the community of St. Mark's United Methodist Church. I'm glad to welcome you and invite you into celebrating this most solemn day in the Christian calendar, Good Friday, as we focus on the cross of Jesus Christ, the central image of our life of faith together, the recognition that at the core is a struggle that leads to hope of new life. So I invite you to join me in prayer. Let's pray together. Loving God, we find this story of this day so difficult to understand. How could the one who embodied love and healing be put to death on a cross? We realize that this was not the result of particularly wicked people, but the awful result of ordinary human attitudes. To our horror, we see the consequences of human negligence and human indifference and find ourselves drawn into the collective guilt of the human family. And yet we know that on this day of searing pain and terrible agony, the depths of your love were made real for us all to see. We pray that as we remind ourselves of the terrible events of this day, that your love will make us whole and compel us to share redeeming love with a world that is often negligent and indifferent. Bless us, we pray, in this time of remembering. Make your love real in us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now P.J. Rauch is going to read for us uh, one of the crucifixion stories, this from the Gospel of John. Hello, St. Mark's family. Today's scripture is from John 19, 16b to 30. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus, carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and in Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. To focus our worship on this Good Friday 2020, I decided that what I'd like to do is to share a hymn that has always been very important to me. 
and a, a hymn that has really touched my life in powerful ways. Uh, I may even say it's my favourite hymn, even though it's a hymn about the cross and Good Friday. It's the, the famous Isaac Watts hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. I'm going to sing each of the verses and then say something about what they mean for me. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. My richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. These words for me tell me uh, that when I look at the cross, I can get the world in perspective. We all get caught up, as, as I do, in the things that we're doing, the things that are important to us, uh, and sometimes we get things out of proportion and things that seem really, really important are really not that important. And some of the most important things, it's easy to neglect. But when I look at the cross, then I have to say what really matters, what is really important, what are the human values that really make a difference in the world. and and. The things that are important for me in terms of success, in terms of wealth, in terms of prosperity, in terms of success in so many areas of life, suddenly they don't seem quite so important. When I look at the way that Jesus was so focused, so single-minded in what he was trying to accomplish in teaching his ways of love, and teaching his ways of compassion and care, of healing for the human family, of, of values that speak to a deeper justice than we've ever imagined. And I, I'm aware that in this uh, uh, coronavirus crisis, we're having to take stock again of, of many of our values and what's important. And look again at the injustices of our society as we hear uh, that in, in Louisiana and in Chicago, 70% of the people who are dying are African American. I have to look at that and say, what are we doing? What is wrong here? And how can I play my part in making the love of Jesus real? So it's a matter of perspective, looking at the things that are really important and making sure that those are the highest priority in my life rather than the stuff that I get caught up in every day. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. Again, the theme continues about getting our priorities straight um, and making sure that we have humble spirits spirits that are able to recognize the things that are truly important in life and truly important in the world and, and rise above our own small agendas. And the only thing that matters is that reality that Jesus gave himself for us, that Jesus lived a life of love so completely and that people really just didn't understand it. They didn't get it. And, and, and so they behaved in predictable, limited ways. 
And that's what led to the fact that those shouts of Hosanna, save us, changed into shouts of crucify just a few days later. The crucifixion of Jesus is one of the great, the greatest scandal of human history, uh, the greatest uh, proof that we have of human uh, uh, condition of sin, I guess we can say, that humanity is so limited in what we believe can happen. And yet, if we're really honest, we know that the world could be a very different place if we only all committed ourselves to a different kind of agenda that got away from our own personal agendas and looked out for making God's agenda real in the world, then the world would be a very different place. There is no need for anybody to go hungry, no need for anybody to be the victim of injustice, no need for anybody to be persecuted, no need for anybody to be a refugee or to be living on the streets, no need for people to be in prison uh, for uh, all sorts of uh, crimes that really there are other ways to solve the social problems created by those crimes. So there's so many things that <laughs> uh, come to mind when I look at the cross. Uh, these are just a few. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love, flow mingle down did as such love and sorrow meet o thorns compose so rich a crown and this is a, a reminder to me of just how physical the crucifixion was. This was not a theological event. This was not an emotional event only. Uh, this was very bloody, very violent, very cruel. And, and the fact that Jesus was tortured and tormented uh, is just so sick and so wrong. And, and yet in the midst of it, Jesus kept on loving kept on reaching out, kept on being aware of his own deep sadness at the human condition and his own willingness to keep on loving. And that's what the power of the cross is. It's the power of God's love made real in Jesus and, and a reminder to us that God's love can be made real in us no matter how complicated life gets. And, and that last line says, or thorns compose so rich a crown. Jesus had this crown of thorns put on him. It was cynical. It, it was uh, making fun, tormenting Jesus. And, and that makes the whole event even sicker and more tragic than it would have been otherwise. Those people who were doing this to Jesus just hadn't a clue. And it's a reminder to all of us to be more sophisticated than that, that to think things through, to understand the consequences of the way we act or the way that we don't act. One of the problems I think that we're all seeing as we've been reading this book, White Fragility, is the recognition that it's not so much the, the bad things that people are doing, but it's the complete indifference to the bad things that are going on in the world around us. And people are being humanized. People are being victimized. People are being uh, put to death. People are being uh, caused considerable pain. And we can take the initiative in the name of Jesus and make things different. Were the whole realm of nature mine That were an offering far too small Love so amazing, so divine 
demands my soul, my life, my all. At the center of the cross is God's amazing love, God's amazing grace, God's constant loving of us, God's constant seeking for us, God's wish to draw us in to the orbit of God's love. And, and Jesus lived it. Jesus was the perfect expression of that love. A and it came to its climax, to its focus, right there on the cross at Calvary. A, a terrible, terrible day in human history, but a day that made real what was the truth of the human family and it's a reminder to us that we need to refocus our priorities, refocus our commitments with a whole realm of nature of mine. If, if I owned everything, that would be too small an offering, the hymn says. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Wow, this is what Good Friday calls us to do and to be. In the midst of the blood, in the midst of the struggle, the pains, the horror of it all, the terrible violence, there is God's love. And God's love is made real on that cross on Calvary. And God's love is made real in you and in me this Good Friday. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, Jean and Jim Strathdy are going to lead us. Uh, the song is called God Weeps. God weeps at love withheld at strength misused, at children's innocence abused, and till we change the way we love, God weeps. God change the way we win, God bleeds. God cries at hungry mouths, at running souls, at creatures dying without until we change the way we care, God cries. pray together. Let's pray. And as you join in the quietness in your own home, 
I invite you to be still and sense God's presence with you. And as you enter into that stillness, I would remind you of those seven final words of Jesus that we hear through the Gospel writers. Jesus says, Father, forgive them, because they really don't know what they're doing. And then Jesus speaks to the thief be beside him on another cross and says, Today, you will be with me in paradise. And then in a moment of deep agony, he cries out, My God, my God, why have you left me? And then, by contrast, a moment of tenderness as Jesus speaks to his mother and commends to her the beloved disciple, the one spoken of in John's Gospel. We don't know who this is. And he says, Woman, here is your son. Then he says, I am thirsty. It is completed. Into your hands I entrust my life. Loving God, as we hear these words and retell the familiar story of Good Friday, the agonizing story, our brains and our hearts, our souls are confused. We don't understand the whys, the hows of all of these events. We know that Tragedy and suffering are at the heart of human existence. That stress, fear and anxiety, that injustice, violence and war have been central to the life of the human family since the beginning of time. And yet we know that on that cross we saw the power of love. We saw the power uh, of grace overcoming all the evils of the world bringing justice, bringing hope, bringing compassion and care, bringing peace to your world in the most powerful way. And so on this Good Friday, as we find ourselves looking towards the cross, we sense all the pain and the agonies in the world around us. We're very aware of so many people suffering and struggling through the coronavirus pandemic. And as we think of those closest to us and those who are our neighbors and friends and family members, we remember the needs of the world that are always a part of our prayers. And we think of those being impacted by the, the pandemic who are refugees, those who are the victims of war, those whose lives are already turned upside down by poverty, those who are living on our streets, those who are struggling to find justice. And we pray for them. We pray for your peace. 
we pray for your love and your grace. And we pray that our political leaders and leaders of our communities and society may have a vision, a glimpse of another kind of world rooted in your love and your grace so that we may be part of those movements to heal and transform your people so that your love and your grace may prevail. We pray in that redeeming holy name of Jesus Christ as we say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we're going to hear some music this time from the combined choirs of St. Mark's with our much beloved Matt and Jill Rothstein. As when they were still with us, they sang this amazing version of, of Calvary. So please... Uh, look in and respond to this extraordinary piece of music. Thank you. 
In a moment, I shall be sharing our closing prayer and benediction. And then Robert Rausch will be playing for us that amazing, wonderful American folk hymn, What Wondrous Love Is This, O oh My Soul, O oh My Soul, a hymn written with the cross and Good Friday in mind. Let us pray. May Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you now and forever. And a prayer from the prophet Muhammad. O oh God, give me light in my heart and light in my tongue, light in my hearing and light in my sight and light in my feeling. Give me, I pray thee, light on my right side and light on my left hand and light above me and light beneath me. O oh Lord, increase light within me and give me light and illuminate me and illuminate the whole human family. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Mm -hmm.